Hello, it's Mr. Baumgarten, and today I want to show you how you can use the Adafruit Metro M4 board to control, use the data pins on it to turn uh, their pins, turn the pins off and on to control some kind of electronics. So you can see here I've got something very simple set up, just an LED on, my, on a breadboard. Right, and so provide power to that and that's going to light up the LED. And I can test that I've got my breadboard wired up correctly straight away by using the power pins on the M4. I don't know if the camera's focusing on that correctly. Uh, but if you look closely on your M4 board, you will have labels here of ground, ground, which is your negative power supply, 5V, which is five volts, 3.3, three volt power supply. So I could take this in and wire it up into my ground. I'll wire the other end into my five volt and my LED should turn on. Excellent. But now I want to be able to control that through a program rather than just plugging it straight into power. So instead of using the five volt, I'm gonna use one of these digital pins. So we have some analog pins and we have some digital pins. Uh, so just the pins with the normal numbers and for now I'll ask you to skip pins zero and one because they can be used for special functions as, as well later on. So I'm gonna use pin number two. All right, and so what you see I've got my black wire is connected into my ground pin and my red wire is connected into pin number two. And my LED is not on. So now I need to go to the computer and put a program onto this board to get it to turn it on. Now I've plugged my Metro board via USB cable into the computer and I know that I've done this successfully because I have a circuit high fo uh, folder drive letter that has appeared here in Windows. And if I open it up, there's some template files that are given to us when, um, when we first purchased the board. Uh, you can leave all that as is, but we are going to be replacing the contents of the code.py file. Um, the way these boards are designed is they will when they are powered on, they look for a, for a file called code.py and whatever is in that is what they will run. Now, I highly recommend that you use the Moo software for this. Uh, codewith.moo is the website to get it. Uh, and when you open it up, it should detect the board when you plug it in, uh, but make sure that you go into the mode option and pick CircuitPython. And I'm gonna create a new program. So to get this to work, uh, we do need to import a few Python libraries. Let me grab my keyboard. And keep that where you can see it. So we need to import board, uh, which is a Python library that contains information about this board. So, uh, and we will also import the digital IO library which is the library that contains the instructions about uh, controlling the pins. And finally, I'm gonna import the time library because we'll uh, make our program cycle, you know, turn it on for one second, turn it off for one second, something like that. So the first thing I need to do is create a variable that uh, references this pin. And I'm gonna call it LED since that's what I'm gonna use the pin to control. So I'm gonna create a variable, call it LED, and I'm using the digital IO library. And inside that, there is a, a series of some uh, um, objects available to me to create from. And you can see here that one of them is digital in out. That's the one that I want. All right. Uh, and what do I wanna control? through digital in and out, I want to control pin number two on the board. So inside parentheses, I need to tell it which pin I want the that 
this variable is going to be attached to. And so that's going to be board dot D for digital two. All right, so the digital pin number two is going to be my LED. And to control this electronically, it's as simple as to do uh, my variable name dot value. And I'm going to set it to true. And then let's just do, let's pause for one second and then do led.value and set it to false. All right, so when we set it to true, it's going to turn on. When we set it to false, it's going to turn it off. Now, if I save this and I navigate to my board and I select my code.py, I want to save over whatever is in that file, replace it with my code, hit save, and let's watch the LED. Yes, the file exists, and I do want to replace it um, as my program runs. Okay, we're getting this color pattern happening here with the, I don't know if you can see that through the light. All right, you notice that this is, my LED here is blinking a whole bunch of series of colors. Uh, that's an error code. So let's see what the error is. I can open up the serial monitor. And this is the reason why I wanted you to use Moo, because any print statements or any uh, syntax errors in your code and everything else will appear in this pop-up box. So I'm going to reload my program. And you can see here the instruction is Control D to reload. So click into this win bottom window, Control D on my keyboard, and it's going to rerun. And you see here, I've got an error, line seven, cannot set the value when direction is input. So I need to tell it that this board is not to be read as a sensor, but is to be controlled as an output pin. So to do that, I'm going to come back up here and put in a new line. And I'm going to say LED dot direction equals digital IO, so it's from the digital IO library again, dot direction, dot output. And this tells the board that I am wanting to control this pin rather than read values in from this pin like it, as if it was a sensor. Uh, it's just a safety mechanism built into the board so that we don't fry sensors by sending voltages to them um, uh, without expecting to. So now if I try saving that, and we see that my LED blinked, okay, and my code ran. Now I can put some print statements into my code. Print, turning on LED, and then print, turning off LED. And these print statements will appear here in my console window, uh, timed with the LED. So let's save that and watch it run. Okay, uh, and now I could easily just put this into a loop. Maybe while true, let's run this thing forever. Put that into the loop and give it another time. Let's have it turn off for half a second. And if I save and run that, I now have a blinking LED that is on for a second and then off for a second. And I can scale my program up from there, All right? But the general idea is you create a variable that references your pin. It will assume that it is an input pin by default for your sensors. So then if you're wanting to control an output, you need to have this extra line that specifies an output. And then to set the outputs, it is just whatever your variable name is dot value and you set it to true or false. Likewise, if you've got a sensor, maybe you're wiring up a button, to read the value in from those sensors, right? you don't need to explicitly specify it as an input. But once you create your var variables for them, it's just whatever the variable was, dot value. So I, if I had a button, right, I would define it as, maybe if I've got it wired up in, into pin three, right, I could have, I can see what the value of the button would be by saying if, button dot value. Uh, and because it's a digital pin, it'll only ever be true or false. So I can just, if it's true, it's going to run the if statement. And if it's false, then it would run an else 
statement. Or I could say if not button value. Uh, and but, yeah, that's about it. That's how digital pins work on the Medio M4 Express board. Really simple. Uh, and you can just uh, scale it up from there with your Python. Okay, this is Mr. Baumgarten signing out.